Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and just a country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila running that camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Today we're going to make cast iron corn pudding. So easy, so quick, and so delicious, with a couple of options at the end that are up to you. Come on over, let's get started. All right, we got a nice large mixing bowl here. We're going to put in four large eggs. Now, if you don't have large eggs, if you got medium, throw five in there. If you got little small eggs, throw in six. It's going to turn out all right, trust me. But we're going to put in four large eggs, and we're going to whisk them up pretty good, just till everything is about the same color. We don't want any white on one side, yellow on the other side. That looks pretty good. Right there, we're going to dump in a half a cup of sugar. We'll go ahead and mix that in there. Then we're going to put in one cup of sour cream. And instead of going to the store and buying a big thing of sour cream and only using a cup, then it sits there and spoils in your refrigerator. If you don't have any other recipes in mind, just go get one of these little 8-ounce tubs of sour cream. Because 8 ounces equals one cup right here. I don't got a spoon. So I'm going to have to use my wooden spoon, which I'm going to use for mixing in a little bit anyway. Get that out. Well, that fit in there pretty good. That works. Aha! So one cup of sour cream, and we're going to incorporate that into, oh, it already looks so good, into our mixture. And then we're going to put in one teaspoon of vanilla and an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. And I want to thank Sheila for running to the store and getting nutmeg because we were out of it. We couldn't find it in the cupboard. And she shot up there and bought some. Thank you, Sheila. You're welcome. All right. Now it's time for our corn. Can't have corn pudding without corn. That nutmeg just even smells so good coming up out of there. Okay, we're going to put in two cans of cream corn. And these here are, I always tell you, 14.75 ounces. And it don't matter if it's 15 ounces or not. But we'll dump in two of those. All right. Then I got some frozen corn here. And I got two cups of frozen corn. But it's pretty thawed now because I dumped it in here about an hour ago. But let me show you the little bag. This is golden sweet corn from Kroger's. And it's a little 12 ounce bag. So that's kind of neat because 12 ounces makes just a little over two cups in here of your kernel corn. Now if you don't want to use frozen or you don't have it, you can always use just regular kernel corn in a can, but drain it so that it's, you know, just the kernels and no juice on that corn. Of course, the other cream corn, you want to use everything. But on here, we'll put, oh man, it's just looking great. I can't wait to show you the finished product here. Now we're going to dump in one cup, that's right, I said it, one cup of melted butter. Now I melted this in a microwave. You can heat it in a little saucepan, but make sure it gets back to room temperature before you pour it in here so it don't cook your eggs. And you want to get two sticks of unsalted butter. When you melt two sticks of unsalted butter, it just happens to make one cup. Perfect. Oh, man. Now, I was talking about some options a little bit earlier, and here's where I got to I gotta kind of talk to you under my breath so Sheila don't hear me here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can burn this by or not. All right, here's some diced jalapeno peppers. Can I maybe just put in just a little bit, just like maybe a teaspoon in there or something? Now, how do I do it on my side? Well, anyway, we'll skip that, but that's another option if you want it because it's got such sweetness to it. If you want to give it a little sweet and heat, throw in a little bit of diced jalapeno peppers. Just start out with a teaspoon. That's plenty. Now it's time to make it what we called it, cast iron corn pudding. And I wanted to tell you for sure, so I got my tape measure out, and this is their 12-inch cast iron frying pan. I wanted to make absolutely sure because most people dump this recipe into a 9 by 13 
pan, but if you like to use your cast iron at the house, or maybe you haven't got it out of the cupboard for a while, go get that 12 inch cast iron frying pan. Pour that all in there. <clears throat> now I got to back up. <laughs> because I forgot to put in an ingredient over here. I was looking at that jalapeno peppers and I forgot something. So I'm going to do it right on camera. I don't care. I'm going to pour it right back in there. And then I'm going to incorporate what should have went in there to begin with. I was wondering about that. Why didn't you say something and help me out, Sheila? Well, it's just... <laughs> I'm going to leave it right on camera. Here's the deal. Years ago, I went fishing up in Canada, caught a bunch of northerns, and I forgot my fish breading. And the only thing in the cupboard, believe it or not, was Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix. And we actually took the northern pike fillets and fried them in this stuff, and they were really delicious. So, that was just an ingredient that I thought would be so perfect, and it is, for this recipe. And this, by the way, is an 8.5 ounce box. And it's going to fight me all the way, not wanting to come out of here. I don't know why it's... Look at that. Can you believe that? That was really good. Uh, thanks, Sheila. I'm leaving that in there, too. Can you believe that paper is stuck to the bottom? Thanks a lot, you guys. Whoever manufactures this stuff. Jiffy, apparently they glued it in there. Should I just leave that in there? I think so. All right, now I don't want to stir this too much. When you get to the breading part, you want to kind of fold it in there. <laughs> I got to see what that looks like on camera because that is just too crazy. You just want to kind of fold it in to make your batter. You don't really want to whip up batter too much. There it is. That's pretty incorporated. That's good. And that'll all dissolve. And all that corn, if it had any chill to it at all, that frozen corn will dissolve and warm up before it even gets to this next point. So look at here. Do I got a mess or what? Let me show you how to do this. Just take the whole paper towel roll. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, and that's how you do that. Now you pour it back into the cast iron skillet. Golly, I'm telling you what. Every now and then that happens. You can edit and start over and back it up, or you can just do what I did. Forget it and... It's and your first reality. <laughs> is this my first reality one where I didn't edit out some of the mistakes? I still cannot get over this little stuck bag that won't come out of that Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix box. That is amazing. And then, of course, it busts open and flies all over me. Now, here's the neatest part. We're just going to pop this in a 350-degree oven, preheat the oven. You preheated the oven, right, Sheila? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Well, now we're going to go ahead and preheat the oven to 350, and then... And then we're going to bake it for 35 to 40 minutes until it gets nice and golden brown and sets up so when you jiggle it, it don't jiggle. But before we do that, I got thinking about something. We love those little blueberry muffins that they sell at the airport that got that little sugary crust on top. I've never seen this before ever. But what if you just took a little bit of sugar and sprinkled it on top? just like we did with those muffins. We've got a recipe on here where we did that. And man, that sure has got a nice crust to it, don't it? It does. So we're gonna do just exactly that. We're gonna take a little bit of sugar and we're gonna sprinkle it across the top. All right, not a little bit, a whole lot, but probably about a teaspoon or heaping teaspoon. Perfect. Now, we're gonna go in and preheat the oven and pop this in there for 35 to 40 minutes and we'll be back to show you what the finished product is now that I got the stuff in, now that I put the right deal in, now that I threw breading mix all over the place, let's put it in the oven. We'll see you then. It's all good. <laughs> you always say that. One other thing before this goes in the oven, remember I told you about those jalapeno peppers? Sheila's always got a handle on everything so the handle side is her side and this side over here is going to be my side with a few little jalapeno peppers in there and then we'll see if they sink because I couldn't put it in the batter she said put it in your half and I'm thinking now how do I stir half of it but then I thought I can always put it in there 
afterwards, just like that. Bingo. Hey, does that look good or what? Fantastic. He needs to move over to be more uniform. In fact, I could just take my finger and tap each one of them down under the surface because I really do want them to bake inside that batter. So I'm going to poke each one of them down there. And if you do this, then your family will have no idea that you put those jalapeno peppers in there. In fact, I could put some on Sheila's half and poke them under there and she'd never know they were there until yes, she took a bite and then that'd be the end of that. So, All right, now it goes in the oven. We'll see you in about 35 to 40 minutes. I'm telling you, you've got to see this up close. It turned out fantastic. We still haven't got that little bag loose from the cardboard box, but that's all right. Come check this out. I'm going to show you where we sprinkled that sugar on the top. It looks just like one of them little blueberry muffins you get at the airport. I cannot wait to try this. Come on over and check this out. Can you see the little sugary coating on top, Sheila? Yeah. Super close up. Man, we actually had to bake this for about 45 to 50 minutes. Then we turned it off and cracked the oven door and kind of let it sit in there and settle down. When you do bake it, it'll raise clear up. You'll think it's bubbling. Oh my goodness gracious, it almost looks too moist. But once it settles back down, let me see, this ain't too bad right now. I still got to use this. See how solid that is? And this half has all them little jalapeno peppers in there. I can see them peeking out. This half is for Sheila. This half is for me. Of course, we're not going to eat a half of a skillet of this stuff tonight. But Sheila, back up a little bit and let's get some bowls and dish this up. I had Sheila go get me a butter knife for two reasons. One, because I told her, I said, what if you could kind of cut this like a pie? Could you actually get that little scooper out of there with a little teeny pie slicer? Might be a little bit soft, but we'll see here. And of course, you know, we always go with the two spoons. This is Sheila's little baby spoon. She doesn't like a big spoon like me. I like the big spoon. She has a little baby spoon. So let's see what we will see. I'm going to kind of see if I can't turn this. Don't take me long. Look at a horseshoe. Let me get this turned around a little bit and see if this will come out. And Well, look at there. Looky there. Well, how cute. Now hold on a second. Now let me turn it back the other way. Don't, don't touch it long, Steve. There we go. Oh yeah, here's the, I got to see where the magic line is because part of this, remember the handle, she's always got a handle on everything. So I'm going to try to get one of these little wedges out of here. Look at that. Would you look at that? And I told you that Sheila brought me this butter knife for two reasons. And one of them was to try to do what we just did. Of course, we're going to have to get some of this other stuff out of here, but we want to let the picture look really nice to begin with. And the other thing was, she says, can't we put a little pat of butter on top of there after it comes out of the pan? And I said, you know what? You're absolutely right. You're a little spoiled brat. You know that. Look at there. I'm going to spoil myself right with you. That sounds good, Sheila. Where'd you come up with that little buttery idea? Butter on butter. <laughs> butter on butter. Oh, man. You know what? I got to do this. Sheila, there you go. Here's a spoon. I'm going to let you try a taste on your side while I try a taste over here. This may take a moment of silence, but we'll see what we're going to see. That top, little crunchy, sugary piece right there. This is really good. <laughs> Isn't it fantastic? You know, yours is missing jalapeno peppers. Mmm. Mmm. There's only one thing I can do, and that's set the bowl down, which is almost empty. Sheila, the butter idea was incredible. The sugar coating on top to make that crunch is outstanding. Let it set up a little longer than we did after it comes out of the oven. And I'll bet you can just almost pull pie slices out. This is still warm, but let me get you one more shot of this so you guys can sit at home with your mouths watering. Look at that. Didn't that turn out fantastic? There you have it. 
We call it cast iron corn pudding because there's corn puddings all over. We wanted to make ours a little bit different. So we thought instead of putting in a nine by 13 pan, which you can do, we just thought we'd put it in this 12 inch cast iron skillet and bake it in the oven. Oh man, turned out fantastic. We hope you enjoy our recipes and we really hope you subscribe to our channel and a little shotgun red's face will pop up over here in a little bit. When it does, click on it. Next to that will be a little bell. If you click on that bell, you'll be notified every time we come out with another recipe. And I'll tell you, that turned out just incredible. Over here, I'll put a few more recipes, quick and easy recipes that you can click on. But is this the most delicious? <laughs> Sugar-coated, cooked in a cast iron skillet, coated with a little butter after it comes out of the pan, cast iron corn pudding you ever ate? Boy, if it ain't, it ought to be. Steve Hall in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila running that camera, I will say this, you never have to go to a website to get our recipes. When I'm looking at different recipes and stuff and kind of checking out some different ideas, go to my blog and go to this and go to that. I, okay, but why not make it so you can just go right below the video and click on show more. It'll drop down. You can copy it and paste it because when you're in a hurry and you got guests coming over and you got 45 minutes to make the most delicious thing in the world, you don't want to be going to some website. Even though you got a little extra time on your hands from time to time, we hope you snoop over there at shotgunred.com. But none of our recipes are there. They're all right underneath the video. We hope you enjoyed this. Did you have a good time, Sheila? I did. Now you can hurry up because I'm ready to eat. <laughs> now she's wanting me to hurry up for once so she can dive back into that little bowl. She had to sit down to go back and run the camera, which she always does. A terrific job. We'll see you next time right here. On cooking with shotgun red. Every now and then we get a recipe that's just mouth-watering, fantastic, delicious. And this is one of them. Give it a try. Put in those ingredients and bake it and mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm.